821, good morning everybody. Thanks for being with us on the morning show. It's Halloween. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. Now, uh, Chatelaine has just put out their Women of the Year issue, and we're lucky enough to have one of them with us, Leah Gramanis. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. So there were six categories. There was Entrepreneur, Everyday Heroes, Game Changers, Mavericks, Hot Under 30, and Newsmakers. And you were chosen in the Everyday Heroes uh, category. You, as a teenager, left an abusive home. Yep. You ended up homeless and in a shelter, and you made a couple of promises to yourself in that time in your life. Right, right. I promised that I would become successful and come back and be a role model for other women. That was really important. Nobody ever came into my shelter to say, look where I am now. And I was here. You can get here. I needed people to know that success belongs to everybody, that anyone, no matter what happens to you, can make it. And the second promise was that I would dream as big as I could and I would fulfill every dream. Where, where do you think that came from when you're at the lowest point in your life that you still somehow believed in your future that much? Well, to be honest, it's, it came to a point where it was either believe or die. Right. You know, it, it just was one of those things. I, it, you know, I couldn't go on the way that I was. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget how painful that time was. And I really want to make sure that other women and children it can get through that a lot faster than it took me. Mm -hmm. so. so you inspire other women, but as you said, nobody came into your shelter. So what was that, what, that moment that, that you had say, you know, this is not going to be me forever? What, what, what made that happen for you? Well, you know, it's just when you come into a shelter, you're really broken down. It's really easy to believe that there must be something wrong with you. And your entire future becomes a black hole. Um, I needed to make sure, you know, people are so ashamed and so when they rebuild their lives, I was sure that there were people who had rebuilt their lives. Mm -hmm. They never came back so we had no proof. Mm -hmm. But I needed to make sure that, um, you know, it's not about where you've been, it's about how far you've come. And I want people to be proud of that because we've survived. Mm -hmm. And so people need to change their mindset. But we need people to be there to show them. And it makes such a big difference. I've seen with all the women that we work with. Mm -hmm. They change like that as soon as they know that there's proof that it's possible. So did you have a role model for yourself? No. No. So <laughs> no, I didn't. You? So what, what do you think it was that made you different from the other women that, you know, that, that didn't have that moment? It was the promise. It, was, it, it was the promise. And then I went into the library and I, because I didn't have any role models, I used to take pieces of people's stories and I'd glue them together to sort of make this patchwork role model of my own and, and try and follow some sort of an example. I mean, if you don't have it, you can construct it. So. But you must have had some degree of inner strength. It, it, it must be part of your temperament, I assume. Maybe. Yeah, well, what makes one person give up and another person have this spark of survival? Maybe it's about a sense of justice, you know? You, you just don't want to see other people go through what you went through. Um, but, you know, it was... I'm, I'm so grateful that it's happening now because that now we have 17 women, you know, successful journalists, uh, you know, award-winning journalists, successful politician, world champion athlete. All of these women who are breaking the stereotypes and showing if the services are there, that it's possible. Success belongs to everybody. Mm -hmm. and, and that's important. Have you always had this strength with you and this sense of hope and optimism when you were, you know, at a low point? How, I can tell you, it never felt like strength back then, no. and it never will. You know, when you're starting, it is a horrible experience, and it takes every ounce of energy that you have to be able to keep yourself up every single day. But you do it, and slowly, slowly, you gain the strength, and you start to gain a new perspective, and new opportunities come ab about. So. You know, it's, it's a really long process and it's a really hard process and I cannot sugarcoat that at all. You've succeeded uh, as a very successful corporate executive mm -hmm. as well. Um, how do women react to you when you do come in and talk to them? What does it mean to them? Oh, it's interesting because, you know, you do see them at first. They're kind of, you know, not, not quite trusting and wondering what's going on. And sure, yeah, right, you're coming from some sort of... Pl I'm sure you had somebody giving you a, a leg up. But then as they start to hear the stories, you see the, the spark in their eyes and they start to believe slowly, slowly. And, um, and, you know, it's just amazing to watch because you do see that fire light up in them and they just change and you start to see some of these women that I've worked with now have started their own businesses many of them have you know full-time jobs in the career of their choice you know the children two of our children who've worked with us have made it to the finalist list of, of Canada's top 20 under 20 one at nine years old I think she was the youngest probably one of the only Aboriginal girls as well 
So, you know, the changes are drastic, and it's just because of the belief and the support. You know, you were talking about your promise. I mean, do you just make a list? I was reading a little bit about you and a lot of the adventurous things that you've done from, you know, you're diving, you're on a motorcycle, you're do doing all sorts of things. Do you just make a list and say, okay, uh, this year I'm going to do five of them. Check, 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 check. <laughs> yeah, looking down, yeah. Sh I wish I could show this picture, but it's too small. But shark diving, there is a big giant shark yeah. right beside you. Yeah, oh, there it's it not is. this right. big. Ooh, wow. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, that was... Land. <laughs> they were beautiful too. I loved them. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it was important for me. It, people think I'm an adrenaline junkie, but it's not that. It's actually part of that promise. I wanted to make my life so outrageous mm -hmm. that you know it would capture the imagination of anyone who was who needed hope today. So that I would be all the way up here, and then these women would have all this to look forward to. Mm -hmm. So that if all they wanted was to be a good mother and to have food on the table for their children and that was their idea of success I wanted them to be able to have that they don't need to dive with sharks but at least that sort of makes them think that if I can live this extreme crazy life then they can do anything right? So do you have more adventures on your list of things that you'd like to accomplish? A million, a million but right now I'm actually really happy I, I run a women's uh, adventure group and I'm helping other women to mm -hmm. have their own adventures so we were just dirt biking yesterday so <laughs> oh, yesterday yeah. okay. yeah. I'm just dirt biking <laughs> regular day on the weekend Fantastic. <laughs> Leah Gormanis, thank you so much and congratulations. Oh, thank you. So worthy.